Hello everyone, so today I am going to teach you about oligodendroglioma brain tumor which is one of the common glioma brain tumor. It's a diffuse infiltrating slow growing brain tumor, right? Alright, now as per the World Health Organization 2016 definition, a case is defined as an oligodendroglioma adult type only if there is a presence of mutation of IDH1 and 2 along with 1p and 19q co-delation that is a short arm of chromosome number 1 and long arm of chromosome number 19 so that is the definition now epidemiology or geographical burden of the oligodendroglioma so it constitute 3 percent of all primary central nervous system malignancy right 3 percent and it is it constitute 5 percent of the all glial neoplasm right so it is one of the glial brain tumor and it is commonly seen in the male. Male predominance is seen and 4th and 5th decade is involved commonly. Means 40 to 50 year of age group and 50 to 60 year of age group involved commonly. Now the site of this oligodendroglioma. So the most common site of this brain tumor is a frontal lobe. This red colored is a frontal lobe, right? So it commonly involves frontal lobe. That is a common site of involvement of oligodendroglioma. However, remember that rarely cerebellum, brainstem, spinal cord, you know, temporal lobe and parietal lobe as well can be involved. Rarely it can be involved, right? And see, the tumor involves white and gray matter both. All right. Now let's see the etiology of this oligodendroglioma, why it occurs. So you will surprise that there is a no known risk factor. It's a sporadic tumor without any significant risk factor. All right. Now clinical feature, how the patient will present. So the oligodendroglioma patient mainly be present with central nervous system manifestation because it is a brain tumor. So the common presentation is seizure, patient having convulsions. Then patient can also complain of constant headache, severe headache. The another clinical presentation could be cognitive impairment like impairment in the speech, impairment in walking, right? Focal neurological deficit also can be observed. So all this presentation is according to the area of brain involvement, right? According to sight. All right. Now diagnosis. How will you diagnose the case of oligodendroglioma? So friends, for the diagnosis, first of all, MRI is needed. MRI will locate the brain tumor right then you have to typify the brain tumor for that surgical or stereotactic brain biopsy needs to be done and that is sent for histopathological examination there are certain methods available to detect the idh gene mutation as well because you know for the as per the who idh gene mutation is needed for the diagnosis then methods also available to detect the 1p and 19q co-delation so all the we will see each method one by one right so first of all, we will see the methods to detect the IDH gene mutation, which is required for the diagnosis. So for that mutation detection, first of all, commonly you can do immunohistochemistry. Second, you can do next generation sequencing. Right? The third method to detect the IDH gene mutation is a droplet digital polymerase chain reaction, which is also known by the name DDPCR. It can be done, DDPCR right sanger you know sanger sequencing also can be done so all these are method to detect the idh gene mutation then second you need to detect the 1p and 19q co-delation as well so there are methods available for that also the commonly used method is fluorescent in situ hybridization you know it will detect the short arm of chromosome number one and long arm of chromosome number 19 co-delation all right polymerase chain reaction obviously uh, can be done if fees is not available then array comparative you know genomic hybridization also can be done all right now what will be the gross appearance of this oligodendroglioma so grossly first of all it involves the frontal lobe right and as you can see in this diagram the mass is circumscribed you know it's a circumscribed y circumscribed mass and it is of gray to pink color 
you can see that it's a pink color mass and areas of cystic degeneration hemorrhage and necrosis and calcification can be seen usually hemorrhage and calcification is observed all right now microscopic appearance of this oligodendroglioma if you do the if you do the biopsy then what is the histopathological appearance now we will see the main histopathological microscopic appearance of oligodendroglioma which is our main focus for this today's lecture so first of all in the microscopy you know the cells are very closely packed the cells are very closely packed the cells is having the small round monotonous nucleus nucleus is very small round and monotonous you know they look similar the nucleus is only slightly larger than the normal oligodendrocyte otherwise it look like a normal oligodendrocyte the nuclear chromatin is salt and pepper variety like that of small cell malignancy right you know one of the interesting fact is that the cell membrane is a very distinct you you will observe a very beautiful distinct cell membrane and sometimes small nucleoli can be observed in the oligodendroglioma all right the main characteristic finding of the oligodendroglioma is that there is a presence of perinuclear clearing which is known by the name perinuclear halo and perinuclear halo is known by the name fried egg appearance because it look like a fried egg right perinuclear clearing is seen white colored clearing is seen and it's a formalin fixation artifact so you will not observe it in frozen section intraoperative smear or cross preparation right all right now usually the tumor is very well differentiated but sometime anaplastic feature can be seen like that of necrosis mitosis and microvascular proliferation otherwise it's a very well differentiated tumor with a fibrillary astrocyte morphology as well can be seen right it's a commonly well differentiated tumor but sometime anaplastic features can be seen and you know network of thin wall branching blood vessels is also seen which is known by the name chicken wire appearance which i will show you in the diagram the microcalcification seen in this disease is known by the name calcospherites so friends this is the histopathological appearance of oligodendroglioma suppose if you do the biopsy of oligodendroglioma and examine it microscopically then it looks like in this image you can clearly see that the cells are very small monotonous right and the nucleus is very you know round small and very monotonous they are not highly pleomorphic so this is the image of oligodendroglioma right see uh, this is the 10x view of oligodendroglioma you can clearly see that it's a separated by this thin blood vessel all these are thin blood vessels right they are separating the cell nest so this thin network of this thin you know blood vessel thin walled blood vessel is known by the name chicken wire appearance and if we observe this cell in the 40x view suppose if we examine this uh, particular cell morphology in the higher magnification then you can clearly see that you know the cell nucleus is very small monotonous and the round and the nuclear cell membrane is uh, you know very distinct very distinct cell membrane and the chromatin is you know salt paper type in few area and sometime a small nucleoli can be observed in the nucleus and you can clearly see that there is a presence of perinuclear halo right surrounding the nucleus there is a clearing which is known by the name perinuclear halo which is a formalin fixation artifact and which is a known by the name fried egg appearance which is a hallmark of the diagnosis of oligodendroglioma see uh, this is the diagram from the you know rosai ackerman book and in this particular diagram you can clearly see that very prominent perinuclear halo is seen in the all oligodendrocyte and if you observe carefully then this nucleus is not much, much pleomorphic they are only slightly larger than normal oligodendrocyte so it looks like a normal oligodendrocyte and perinuclear clearing is seen in the all the oligodendrocyte you can clearly see a perinuclear halo clearing which is known by the name fried egg appearance and this is the small blood vessel thin network of small blood vessel which give the appearance like that of chicken wire appearance and you know sometime 
the oligodendrocyte in the cytoplasm contain the fibrillar hyaline material and you know this particular oligodendrocyte known by the name uh, mini gametocyte mini gametocyte so this is the mini gametocyte variant of oligodendroglioma so this, this this was about the light microscopic appearance of oligodendroglioma is very it's very easy to diagnose histopathologically now which are the positive stains for diagnosis of oligodendroglioma so the positive ihc stains include first of all idh1 mutation right idh1 is positive particularly r132h that is positive in greater than 90% cases second one is olig1 and olig2 can be seen can be positive right see these are the ihc markers you know and now the diagnosis is shifted to the ihc diagnosis based on morphology only oligodendroglioma is not uh, diagnosed you know gfap also is positive atrx and sox10 marker is also positive and the fifth marker that is positive is p53 right all right ki67 also positive in less than 5% of the cells so these are the ihc stains which will be positive in the oligodendroglioma now oligodendroglioma often contain gfap positive mini gametocyte you know mini gametocyte contain you know it harbor uh, inclusions in the cytoplasm like rolled uh, you know rolled intracytoplasmic bodies particularly of filamentous substance right so that is mini gametocyte now triad positivity for the idh1 mutation then atrx and p53 if all these three are positive then it is a case of oligodendroglioma it is useful to distinguish it from idh mutant variety of astrocytoma so that are useful marker for the diagnosis this triad all right now grading so usually oligodendroglioma is of who grade 2 tumor right it's a who grade two tumor but if anaplastic features are present then it's a grade 3 variety all right and now prognosis of oligodendroglioma you might have question if i have oligodendroglioma brain tumor then will i survive so yes it's a very slow growing tumor and the patient is usually having very long survival the patient survive for 11 to 15 year and you know favorable prognostic features are if the patient is young age you know if the patient is uh, having the tumor in the frontal lobe uh, you know if uh, if patient present mainly with the seizures convulsions and you know if uh, great you know if a greater extension extent of the surgical resection then also it's a favorable criteria so all these are favorable features the patient survive longer if these features are present now treatment obviously as it's a brain pain, brain tumor total resection should be done if possible total resection of the tumor should be done radiotherapy can be given in the oligodendroglioma right to treat it if surgical resection not possible then radiotherapy can be given chemotherapy also can be tried particularly with the drug you know uh, tamoxifen it can be given sometime chemotherapy also can be given thanks for watching and friends see you soon with the next video till then take care and bye bye thank you